some parts of harp technique are so counterintuitive that you might not realize that you're making a mistake that could hold you back or even cause injury over time. I've been guilty of five out of six of these in my harp journey. Thankfully, I was able to fix these problems and I wanna make sure that you can too because it's never too late to fix your harp technique. The first mistake is plucking with our fingers and thumbs at a similar height. And this is kind of naturally how we would approach touching something as a human being. And unfortunately, that doesn't really work well for harp technique because it doesn't create a good sound. It can cause some tension on the back of your hand if you're trying to pluck nicely, and it doesn't set you up well to be able to play scale passages crossing over and under. So as a harp teacher, we always say, thumbs up, fingers down. And my teacher told me that my family members should call this out to me anytime they walk past me practicing. Thumbs up, fingers down. But I thought, since it looks kind of like a thumbs up, maybe we should call out, are you staying positive? The next mistake is our fingers curling up when we pluck them. Even if we're placing with thumbs up and fingers down, it's surprisingly hard to cause those fingers to actually pluck down into the palm. But it's really important to make sure that we're fully relaxing, we're not creating that tension, and we're getting a good sound out of the harp. Early on in my harp journey, I really thought I was doing this, but when I look back on videos from that time, I can see that it wasn't quite there. <laughs> So this is something we've really got to practice to get this into our muscle memory. So I suggest actually practicing plucking down into your palm like this, even when you're away from the harp in everyday life, so we can start to build that muscle memory that this is how my fingers should pluck. The next mistake is your wrist coming up while you're plucking. So you can actually try this for yourself now. Make a bit of a heel with your wrist and try plucking in mid-air. You'll feel that this is not a healthy position for your hand. Whereas if you make a little bit of a valley, you can be a lot stronger and it just feels healthier. I always say be in neutral with your wrist or maybe a slight valley, never a heel. Because heels are hard work. They're great for hiking, for fitness, but not so good for playing the harp. The next problem is having your elbows too far down. And this is really important because having your elbows at the right height sets up your arm and your wrist and your hand to be in a good position. So it's not good to have your elbows right up against your body and completely down because then you're likely to have to have a little bit of a heel with your with your wrist and start to pluck your fingers the wrong way as well. But it's also not so good to have your elbows too high up because this can create tension in your shoulders and it's really exhausting and you're likely to not be able to maintain this and end up with your elbows too far down again. So our elbows should be somewhere in the middle, always making sure they're away from our body. It can be difficult to remember all these things when you're learning a new piece. I wish I could be there with you during your practice time to remind you and make sure that you create good habits with your harp technique. That's why I created video courses where we guide you through learning a piece with constant technique reminders as you go. You can get your first course free so you can try it out and see how it works for you. I'll put the link below. Mistake number five is having your harp too high compared to your body. And the problem with this is if we were to try and get our elbows right so that we can be in the right position compared to the strings, our elbows have to be so high that it can create a lot of shoulder tension. And then we can't keep it up, so we end up with our elbows down. And then we end up with either our wrists popping up or our fingers plucking in the wrong direction. So it really contributes to some of the other problems. This is often a problem with lap hops. If you're balancing the harp on your lap, you may not realize that that's not setting you up with the right height. But actually this happens with all different types of harps. And what we need to do is just do a lot of experimenting and testing to make sure that our harps are the right height so that we can pluck in the center of the strings, have our elbows just a little way out, and we're setting ourselves up with a good position. The next mistake is not floating off the strings. So when we finished a series of overlapping brackets, we finished closing our fingers into our palm, we also need to float off the strings to release tension. Because if we just stiffly hold our arms in place and only move our fingers, it really can, you can start to feel the tiredness in your shoulders and everything becomes a little bit too stiff. Thankfully, my harp teacher was really good at helping me with this right from the start. And if I ever started feeling some tension, I would put my harp down and shake out my arms just to release any of that tension. And that really helped too. So this is a really good one to make sure you fix. Remember, it's never too late. Now click here to choose your free course to learn a song with technique reminders as you go. Have fun!